Hi guys, in this video we are going to talk about Random Walk MCMC, also known as the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. So a short recap, and instead of pi we are going to continue with the notation of f of x for the target distribution we are trying to sample from. We only have the unnormalized version f tilde, but we somehow want to sample from the actual distribution f. And our goal is using f tilde to create an ergodic Markov chain with f as the limit stationary distribution. Ergodic means that the chain has a unique stationary distribution and that the relative time a single chain spends on each state is proportional to f of x. So instead of needing to sample from all different states, we can follow the sample of a single chain and get that limit distribution. For the chain to have f as its limits distribution, we need to show that either balance or detailed balance holds. And for ergodicity, we mainly need to show the chain is irreducible and also aperiodic and positive recurrent. If all this is confusing to you, please go watch my previous video about Markov chains. The link is in the description. So the main algorithm we'll talk about is the Metropolis algorithm. And calling it that may actually do a bit of injustice to the other authors of the paper. Marshall Rosenbluth later claimed that Nicholas Metropolis, the first author, didn't really contribute much, if anything, to the work itself. Metropolis was the head of the computer lab where the research was done, but according to Rosenbluth, all the actual scientific work came from the two couples, the Rosenbluths and the Tellers. Now, I wasn't there, and so I can't personally verify that account, and I also haven't found an independent confirmation beyond Rosenbluth's own words. Still, the name stuck, it's universally known as the Metropolis algorithm, not the Rosenbluth algorithm. So what problem were they trying to solve? It came from physics, specifically sampling from the Boltzmann distribution, also called the Gibbs distribution. And just to be clear, this has nothing to do with Bayes or Bayesian statistics. The problem is simply how to sample from a very complicated distribution. The Boltzmann distribution says that the probability of a state is proportional to the exponential of the negative energy of that state. In other words, high energy states are less likely and low energy states are more likely. There's the Boltzmann's constant K and the temperature T in the formula, but those don't matter for our purposes. If energy were just a single variable, this would reduce to a simple exponential distribution. But in practice, energy E is a function of a huge vector of variables. The original problem was modeling the potential energy between molecules. Even if you discretize the system and only allow hundreds of molecules, the number of possible states explodes and becomes completely intractable. We will need some proposal matrix or kernel, which will denote by Q. This proposal is part of the transition, but not all of it, as we shall see. Q needs to be symmetric and irreducible. For example, some Gaussian centered at the current point. The algorithm is as follows. Starting at a random point, and for as many samples as we wish, sample a proposed new point from the kernel given the current point. Also sample a uniform value between 0 and 1. Calculate the ratio between f tilde of the new point and f tilde of the current point. If u is less than this ratio, accept the point as the new point. Otherwise, set the point to be equal to the last point. Now, the claim is that a chain defined like this is ergodic and its limit distribution is the normalized f of x. Before trying to prove this claim, let's first try and get some intuition behind this algorithm and also see exactly how it works. The main insight is that even though we don't have access to the normalizing constant, when we calculate the ratios between two points, the normalizing constants cancel out. And so we don't need the full normalized distribution. Also, what the algorithm does is that when suggesting a point with higher probability, we always move to it. So we are attracted to regions of high probability, but there is still a chance of exploring other regions when a point with lower probability is suggested and the chance to accept it is proportional to the above ratio. Here's an example of a 1D mixture of two Gaussians. We have this unnormalized distribution. We start at some yellow point, and using a proposal distribution, we suggest a new blue point. 
Since this new point has a higher probability, we accept it and move to it. We do this again. In step three, we suggest a point very far to the left, and so we reject it. Then we accept a few more points, even though they might be lower probability. Note especially at step nine, the ratio is only 0.15, but we drew u to be 0.06. So we accept and move to this new point with very low density. And because of that, we manage to leave the first area of high probability and start exploring the second area of high probability. If we had continued for many more steps, eventually the sample histogram would look like this. Okay, so let's now try to prove this chain is ergodic and that the limit distribution is the target distribution f of x. The original proof given in the Metropolis paper is a bit hand wavy. In fact, the same is true for the Hastings paper. A rigorous proof would require quite a lot of math and is beyond my capacities, but I am going to try and give some intuition as to the proof. We'll start by showing detailed balance. As shown in the last video, we need to show that this is equal to this. What is usually shown is that the transition kernel is equal to Q times the acceptance probability. You can think of this as the probability of suggesting a new point by the proposal Q times the probability of accepting that point. We can add the normalizing constant to both the numerator and denominator, and we'd get this. From here, we can insert f of x into the mean operator, and because q is symmetric and the mean operator as well, we get this. And doing similar but opposite moves, we can finally arrive at the desired quantity. This is true if we look at the discrete space, but in the continuous space, actually the kernel is not equal to this. Why? Well, a kernel must have the property that the probability of getting into all other states is equal to one. Think of it as the sum of each row must sum up to one in the discrete case. Here we are multiplying a valid PDF Q by some fraction, so obviously it's not going to be equal to one. Here you can see an example where the target distribution is standard Gaussian, the current point is at x equal one, and Q is also Gaussian, but with a standard deviance of half. You can see that between minus one and one, Q and Q times the acceptance probability are the same. But outside this range, they start to diverge. This is more noticeable to the right side, of course, where the probability of Q is higher. And actually, the integral of Q times the acceptance is about 0.82. This means that the probability of not moving and staying in place is about 0.18. That is, we always have an atom of probability at the point where we are currently at, that we reject the move. So the full kernel is actually equal to this, or in other notation, this, where delta is the Dirac delta function. But this isn't too problematic, because obviously detailed balance holds for the case when x is equal to x prime. So we proved detailed balance, and we know f of x is a stationary distribution of this chain, but we still don't know if it's the only stationary distribution. For this, we need to prove that the transition kernel induces an ergodic chain. Here is some hand wavy explanation. The chain is irreducible because obviously using Q, we can reach the entire state space. The chain is aperiodic since we have some probability of rejecting the step and staying in the same point. And so this means the greatest common divisor will be equal to one and the chain is aperiodic. The chain is positive recurrent because, and although Q might not be positive recurrent, the acceptance mechanism makes sure that we are drawn to the distribution of f of x. So as long as f of x is a proper distribution, we are always pulled back to it and the probability mass doesn't wander off to infinity. So since the chain is ergodic, the stationary distribution is unique and our chain is a sample from it. The Metropolis algorithm requires that Q is symmetric, but sometimes that doesn't make sense. For example, when x is positive. Now we could transform the variable, but we could also use Hastings correction and simply incorporate the inverse Q ratio into the acceptance probability. The proof is almost identical, only now we also insert the Q into the min operator. And you can pause the video and verify this for yourself. That's all for this video, see you in the next one.